In an unprecedented achievement that defies expectations, SpaceX has successfully caught the Super Heavy booster, marking one of the most incredible engineering feats of all time. Today, we delve into this remarkable event on AlphaTech, analyzing the intricacies of the catching attempt and exploring the reactions from Elon Musk, Wynne Shotwell, and the FAA. Standing nearly 400 feet, 121 meters tall, the empty starship, including Starship 30 and Super Heavy B-12, launched at sunrise from the southern tip of Texas near the Mexican border. It soared in an arc over the Gulf of Mexico, similar to four previous starships that were destroyed shortly after liftoff, ordering their descent into the sea. The last launch in June was the most successful to date, completing its flight without exploding. This time, SpaceX founder and CEO Elon Musk raised the stakes and risks by attempting to return the first stage booster to the launch pad, where it had taken off just seven minutes earlier. The launch tower, equipped with giant metal arms known as chopsticks, caught the descending 232-ton, 71-metric-ton booster. The tower has caught the rocket, Musk announced via X, formerly Twitter. When Shavuel expressed her emotions, tweeting, I don't know what to say, company employees erupted in joy as the booster was slowly lowered into the launch tower's arms. Even in this day and age, what we just saw is magic, observed SpaceX's Dan Hoyt from near the launch site. I am shaking right now, folks. This is a day for the engineering history books, added SpaceX's Kate Tice from headquarters in Hawthorne, California. The launch window opened at 7 o'clock a.m., 1200 GNT, from the company's Starbase in Boca Chica, Texas. Liftoff occurred at 7.25 a.m., with the Raptor engines performing flawlessly to propel the second-stage Starship into orbit, heading toward the Indian Ocean west of Australia, where it would attempt to land on a water platform. Meanwhile, after separating from the Starship at an altitude of about 74 kilometers, the Super Heavy Booster returned to the launch pad, where the two giant robotic arms caught it. The decision to attempt the catch was made within minutes as the Super Heavy Booster descended. SpaceX had stated that the flight director had to decide in real time, using manual control, whether to attempt the landing. Both the booster and the launch tower had to be in good, stable condition. Otherwise, the booster would drop into the bay like in previous attempts. Everything was assessed to be ready for landing, highlighting the significant risks involved in catching the rocket with the Casilla as it was not guaranteed beforehand, making the decision require the decisiveness and bravery that not everyone could muster. A big thank you to the SpaceX team for achieving such incredible milestones. The landing process for the Super Heavy occurred extremely quickly, as demonstrated in the video SpaceX posted on its X page, taking only one minute. After reaching supersonic speeds, the Super Heavy initiated its landing burn with 13 engines firing in a staggered sequence from the inside out. This ensured balance control and reduce the rocket's descent speed. The booster descended vertically until T plus 6 minutes and 32 seconds, stopping just 5 seconds before reaching the optimal position. It landed using three engines in the correct configuration, and only then did it move toward the tower for the catch. This was truly amazing, especially since, in worst-case scenarios, SpaceX could mitigate damage to its launch tower. The gimbling motion of the three engines contributed to the Super Heavy's smooth movement, making the chopstick catch appear gentle. With loud cheers and excitement from all SpaceX employees, this is undoubtedly a milestone for both SpaceX and the U.S. space industry. Previously, concerns about the Super Heavy's sonic boom upon landing, which could affect surrounding areas, led the FAA to delay the permit for Starship Flight 5. However, SpaceX proved that this concern was unfounded, and with their recent success, the launch was finally able to take place. While we appreciate the FAA for issuing the launch permit, the agency should also reflect on the embarrassment surrounding this landing remain space. evident. The only apparent problem encountered by Super Heavy B-12 was that the lower section near the engines caught fire. This may have been related to the rocket's descent speed and an engine restart that wasn't synchronized, causing the flames to be blown back toward the booster. The fire originated in the aft section of the booster, likely at the quick disconnect connection point. Even after the booster was caught by the chopstick arms, the fire continued for a while before gradually dying down. Additionally, Musk tweeted, Some of the outer engine nozzles are a little warped from high heating and strong aero forces. Easily fixable, 
Minor issues with the Super Heavy booster are to be expected as Starship is still under development. SpaceX will need to attempt this catch a few more times to study the booster's reusability potential. Once SpaceX achieves its goal of reusing the booster, which is inevitable, the world's largest rocket will almost certainly be reusable. While reusing the upper stage will take more time, SpaceX's capability to build ships at high speed means it won't be a problem in the near future. As for the second stage Starship, it continued its flight after separating from the booster. The Starship aimed for a controlled landing in the Indian Ocean, where it would sink to the bottom, following essentially the same trajectory as the previous flight. It re-entered Earth's atmosphere about 50 minutes after liftoff. The ship then attempted a belly flop maneuver, falling toward the ground horizontally before using onboard engines to reorient itself vertically for landing. In the previous flight, the flaps that controlled the landing process nearly burned up and disintegrated. While at least one flap appeared to be damaged during re-entry, the Starship remained intact and softly landed on the water, after which it exploded as expected. SpaceX had no plans to attempt a recovery of the spacecraft for this flight. SpaceX upgraded the software and improved Starship's thermal protection to better withstand the scorching heat of re-entry. This proved effective as the re-entry process went smoothly. Although it exploded again, the impressive part was that it landed almost precisely where it was intended. A camera on a buoy installed by SpaceX in the ocean captured these final moments. It was truly a spectacular display, and I, along with all these space enthusiasts, will likely never forget it. With this outstanding success, our support for SpaceX grows even stronger. This joy is just the beginning, as SpaceX will continue making progress in the future. One of the next significant steps we can look forward to is SpaceX attempting to catch the Starship itself. It may take a few more test launches, but this is something SpaceX will certainly accomplish. Due to the importance of Starship for humanity, the success of SpaceX's latest rocket holds immense significance, especially concerning NASA's timeline for sending astronauts back to the moon's surface. Starship has been selected by the Space Agency as the lunar lander for the Artemis III mission, slated to transport astronauts to the moon in late 2025 or early 2026. However, before this mission takes place, Starship must undergo a series of certification flights. While certification for crew carrying is still a significant milestone on the horizon, today's success certainly sets Starship on the right trajectory. Importantly, SpaceX's vision for Starship extends far beyond lunar exploration. When Musk initially introduced the Starship concept, he referred to it as the Mars Colonial Transporter. During the elaboration of the system at the International Astronautical Congress in September of 2016, he revealed a new name, the Interplanetary Transport System. These earlier designations reflect the spacecraft's primary purpose of facilitating humanity's expansion into an interplanetary species, a long-standing aspiration of Musk's. Despite shifting timelines, Musk envisions Starship as the vehicle that will enable the establishment of a sustainable and permanent human presence beyond Earth. The key breakthrough that could realize this vision is Starship's reusability. This new system represents the next evolutionary step beyond SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket which already employs reused boosters. However, the Falcon 9's reusability is limited to the first stage and payload fairings, with a turnaround time of a few weeks. In contrast, Starship's design emphasizes full reusability, potentially revolutionizing space travel and allowing for more efficient Starship and sustainable to be fully and rapidly mode. reusable. The rocket's launch tower features two massive chopstick arms designed to catch Super Heavy as it returns to the launch pad and to stack a landed Starship back on a Super Heavy for a flight. Today's launch was hoped to lead to an uptick in the launch cadence for new vehicles as further refined designs make their way to the launch pad in Boca Chica. Currently, Starship's test iterations do not include any cabin or life support components needed to carry a payload or sustain a crew, but SpaceX is betting big on the rocket's success.